So in this video now we want to talk to you about functions and functions come in the basic variety at this stage in the uh, course. We'll circle back or towards the end we'll get into some of the more advanced areas but at this point I just need you to get a basic understanding of what a function is and how you would go about using it because later uh, we're going to refer to functions and I need you to at least have a basic understanding but at the end you're going to need to have a much bigger broader understanding as well. Okay so to begin let's look that uh, functions need to be performed as a single task or operation or let me rephrase a function basically will perform one item one task one Ob, you know one objective okay so for example if you know you had a series of instructions that like normally what you do you get out of bed you go to the bathroom then you brush your teeth each one of those is like a task so get up that's one task that's a function go to the bathroom that's another function then you brush your teeth that's another function so now essentially we're you know doing you know multiple functions here right so there's three in that crazy world example all right, and so the thing to understand about functions is they have a name, just like variables, and they're usually followed up by a set of these parentheses of an opening and closing parenthesis. And so an example of what that might look like is this. Say hello with the open and clothing, closing of parentheses. So anytime you see a command like this in code or in a low-code, no-code platform, it is a function. And some of these functions, when you execute them just like that, it performs its single task or operation. Well, this task of this particular function, its job is to just say hello. And so it did. And so you'll see output similar to that. And then you'll have functions that do not always, but usually, almost always, return some sort of a value. And um, while that's true, I do need you to understand that there are some cases in which functions don't return any values at all. Um, it does happen, but expect it to generally return something, okay? And if we move along into that, the other part about functions is they can start to accept or receive values or pieces of data into it. So you can kind of see where this course is going, like each part is building on the last one. So if you've already started guessing, hey, can I pass a variable? into the function? The answer is absolutely yes, and it's very common and acceptable to do so. So if you were already thinking of that, congratulations, you uh, you already think like a programmer, and so picking all of this up is gonna be super easy for you. Um, if you didn't make that connection, no big deal. A lot of that just comes with you know knowing and learning for the first time, so not that big of a deal. In any event, um, if we use the last function that says hello, if you know, as I said earlier, my name is David, and if I used my name and I passed the name David into the function, it could be made to use my name and return my name as part of whatever it does. And in this case, it's supposed to say hello, right? So I call the same function that we've seen earlier, and I pass my name into it, David. And so now it can use that input, and it can say, hello, David. And so the idea here is that inside of the function you'll receive the you know the item the piece of data and you'll use that in whatever it's doing inside of the the function and then it can be used as part of the output so for a simple example you might be adding numbers like a function might take two pieces of data two numbers and it may be the number one and three and return the sum of that which would be four and so while I'm not returning one or three in that, the return value is a compilation or a summation or aggregation or, you know, solving the equation of adding two numbers together. So in any event, not to overcomplicate it, but you can see here that whatever you put in, it comes out in some regards, either calculated or just a string text like you're seeing here. And the other thing to talk about is that when you pass in data into the function, you can pass in one or more pieces of information. Now, I keep saying pieces of information, but the technical term is called a parameter. And so a function accepts one or more parameters. And that's basically what I'm saying here. And parameters can either be not required at all, which is what we first saw when we just called the hello function and didn't pass in David and it just said hello. Then you have some that are required. Now maybe my say hello has been changed and I need to always 
you know, say hello with some input. I need to have that input. And so in that case, it's required. And in some cases, I could program the function to say, okay, I will optionally take in an input. And if you provide it, I'll include that information. Otherwise, if nothing's provided, I'll just simply say hello. So that's essentially basically how a function works at its most basic level. That's it for this, and we'll see you in the next video.